Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I do hope you're doing well. Staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all that kind of stuff. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. It's great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. I've been playing around with Luminar AI and having a lot of fun. Shared a couple of videos, lots of comments and questions. I thought I'd do another one today. Now keep in mind, Luminar AI is still in beta. So this is representative of what the product looks like, but things could change because it is beta. I've been uh, doing a lot of things, playing around, giving a lot of feedback to them. So have, a, I'm sure, a number of other people. So um, I just wanted to be clear about that. In other words, what I show you may look different in the final product, but what I wanted to talk about here today was the, um, the Atmosphere AI tool because a number of people have asked about it and uh, I just kind of wanted to give a quick demo. So let me show you what I've got. I've got a photo here. I've used this photo plenty of times in other videos, and I've done a couple of things to the photo. I made some minor adjustments in the light tool and a little bit of AI structure as well. In this case, I was in catalog, and then I chose the photo. It went straight to edit. I skipped over templates, um, and that's just because I'm just I'm not looking to completely edit a photo. I'm just trying to show you a particular tool. Now, Atmosphere AI is over here on the Creative tab in that upper right corner, so you click on that and you'll see Atmosphere AI, and there you go. Now, once you're in it, you'll have a few different options for the type of atmosphere you want to add to your photo. And if you click on this menu, you've got Fog, Layered Fog, Mist, and Haze. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these in depth, and again, this may change, so I don't know which of these uh, or if any of these are going to change. Uh, between now and launch, but I wanted to give you an idea because as I said, it's a tool that's, I think, gotten some folks' attention. I'm gonna show you two different photos. I think most people are thinking of using fog in like a woodland scene or on a landscape, and I agree. I think it works really well there, especially this depth slider, I think really helps. Um, but I also might would use it on a cityscape, so let me show you that. So here's fog. I'm just gonna drag the amount, and that's all you do, and you will notice that fog concentrates um, until you move the depth, it concentrates primarily in the sky. So I'm going to go kind of heavy, but the cool thing about the AI, as you can see, is it's not just a white sheet that's obscuring the top of the photo and just coming down like a gradient mask would. It seems to be recognizing the structure, which I'm sure is the AI, so it's not completely obscuring the tops of like the castle and, and all those kind of things in the background. I think that's pretty cool. And then depth is gonna bring it closer to you in the photo. So as I drag the depth to the right, you'll see that that is gonna more, it's gonna basically come forward, for lack of a better word. So as I go like that, it's gonna get more and more into the photo. Now, I would recommend being gentle. You don't wanna overdo it with everything at 100. That would be a little bit over the top, I think. But a subtle implementation like that, and by the way, of course, you have lightness, so you, I can turn that down a little bit and reduce the brightness value of that fog. But if I turn this off, that's what my photo looked like before, which I love, just to be clear. Um, but there it is before with just a couple of minor adjustments on the Essentials tab. And then here it is with fog, which I think does a really good job of adding fog very naturally to the photo. Let me show you another example. Now, in this case, I'm going to choose layered fog. And as you can see, it's very different. It is not coming in from the top. Layered fog, as the name implies, is kind of a layer. I find it to kind of be centered around the center of the photo a little bit lower. It's more foreground oriented. In other words, so um, you can see kind of in the foreground and the lower part of the photo, especially if I drag this amount and the depth up a bit, you'll see it's a lot more focused around that area, which, so layered fog to me is low-line fog. That's the way I'm looking at it. Now that's an, um, an excessive amount, so I would probably pull that down a little bit, but I think that looks really cool. So if you're somewhere and there's um, fog that you want it to be kind of laying low on like, uh, you know, across something that's a little bit more foreground, um, ish in the photo, layered fog would be a good way to do that. So there it is, uh, current state, and there it is before. So off and then back on. You can see how that's basically a low-line fog into the uh, the foreground and a little bit of depth um, as I've increased that depth in the photo. I think that's pretty cool. Now let me show you an example on a landscape. Okay, here's kind of a landscape, really, I guess technically a waterfall, but it's nature, kind of landscapey. It's not a big, broad landscape, and by the way, the uh, Atmosphere AI tool works on that quite well, too. I thought this was kind of interesting because as a waterfall, you know, um, this is a little bit of a longer exposure to get kind of that flowing water, and that's the before, 
and that's the current state. So a couple of minor adjustments um, in the light tool, but now once again, I'm here in Atmosphere AI, and I just wanna add a little bit of mood to this photo, which Atmosphere AI is great at. Okay, so I'm not gonna use fog, but I am gonna try layered fog because I think that lower lying kind of fog look would look like kind of mist coming off of the waterfall as the water splashes down into that pool. So layered fog, I'm gonna drag the amount, and you can see it's it's doing a little bit there. As I increase the depth, it's gonna do more. So it's gonna look like it's giving off more of that misty kind of look. So there it is, bef uh, not before, there it is uh, with that applied and there it is before. So again, without any atmosphere AI effect and with it. So that creates a nice, I think, look of like, wow, the mist is really blowing off of the water there as the, uh, the water is cascading and creating kind of that misty look. Now, having said that, there's also mist, so I'm gonna hit reset, and now I'm gonna get mist and start at zero, and let's apply a little bit of mist. Now here's the thing that I noticed on this one is the mist is really applying higher up in the photo. So as I drag it, it's kind of acting a little bit like fog in this one. Now I could pull the lightness down, I don't wanna overdo it. And in other words, the mist is applying uh, as though the, the uh, what would you, I guess the mist would be more airborne versus the layered fog is a little bit lower. So a small waterfall like this, I think the layered fog looks better, but mist could work on a bigger, broader landscape or like a really big waterfall. I'll have to go try it on some of my Iceland shots next. I haven't done that. I think that looks pretty cool. But the other thing that I like is haze. So let me show you this one. There's haze with nothing. And then here it is just a little bit. And again, it's kind of hitting the bottom of the photo, kind of like layered fog does. And I might increase the depth a little bit, increase the amount, pull on the lightness. And again, this is all just me kind of experimenting live. But there it is with the haze applied. And if I turn that off, there you go. There's the before, and once again, with the haze. So it's just a tool that gives you a little bit of interest and atmosphere, as the name implies, a little bit of moodiness. Um, I'm having fun with it. I'm gonna continue experiment. I think you could do cool things with portraits, cityscapes, lots of different things. I'll definitely be back with more on Atmosphere AI, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what the tool looks like and how it's operating. And again, to be clear, Luminar AI is still in beta, so some of this may change, but I'm not sure if it'll change significantly. But there's a couple of ideas of things that may work for you using this tool in Luminar AI. I'll be back more, and I'm uh, sorry, I'll be back soon with more about Luminar AI. And of course, I'll include Atmos Atmosphere AI in additional videos. Just wanted to kind of give you a, not really a first look, because you've already kind of seen it some, but kind of give you a little bit closer look about Atmosphere AI. That's it, my friends. I appreciate you checking out this video. I'll be back soon with more. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon and adios.